This is the Veteran Wargamer. I am your host, Jay Arnold. Uh, in this bull session, I will be assembling the Plastic Soldier Company 15 millimeter uh, Panzer IV. Uh, this is a neat little kit. Uh, each 15 millimeter kit comes with a or comes with five models, five sprues. There are five models and five sprues, however you want to look at it. And luckily enough, the one I have includes the one piece track option, which is you'll see here in a moment. It's very nice to have that because the original uh, track and wheel assemblies were pretty rough. So we're going to check some settings real quick. And I think I should be good. Uh, feel free to go ahead and say something in the chat. I uh, will respond to questions as we go. <laughs> so I will be moderating. Chris Arnold, my brother, the super guest, has chimed in. Howdy, Chris. Looks like he's the one viewer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, these the plastic soldier kits are very, very nice indeed. I really appreciate the engineering and work that has gone into uh, making these kits. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive. I want to say, I want to say, ends up being about five dollars per tank. I think retail they're yeah, twenty one, twenty four, twenty five dollars depending. So let's go ahead and get cracking. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, friend of the show Henry Hyde does the box art for and layout for well, not the art, but the the box layout, the box uh, design for Plastic Soldier Company. So here's the box. You got a Panzer IV H on the on the cover, and that's how we'll be building our Panzer IVs today as H models for use in the game. What a tanker! They'll be representing uh, vehicles of the 11th Panzer Division, which fought at both Kursk and in southern France during Operation Dragoon. Let's take a look at the back. As you can see, they've got a couple of different variants shown uh, on the on the box art, and it's really neat. They've got uh, Vallejo codes for the paints to use for the different camouflage and paint schemes that are that are present on the box. That's a nice touch. So what do we get? Now, like I, if you've been following, if you've been following me on Twitter, you'll know that I've already built three of these suckers. So imagine this times two point five, <laughs> just to give you an idea. So each model kit, each model comes on its own sprue or frame, depending on how you want to call it. Uh, it's got all the parts for all the variants that are presented in the kit. Now, the quick and easy, or the quick track option, or one-piece track option was mentioned on the box. And you'll see here in a second what that means. Uh, well, there it is, one-piece tracks. Pardon me while I just... Adjust the uh, probably while I adjust to using this camera in this uh, configuration. So yeah, here's the one piece track option. Uh, it's pretty handy. All you got to do is cut cut off the sprue at these four points. Uh, it's lines up nicely on the kit. Glue it in place, and off you go. Compare that with hard styrene tracks. At the very least, I will give them credit. They're not individual links or multiple sections, but we do have two track sections on the old style. We've got the road wheels attached here, and then you've got se separate bogies and uh, uh, separate bogies and uh, uh, drive sprockets here. So I would imagine that that was a significant uh, pain to build luckily we've got the the quick option and that's what we'll be working with today so for tools as you can see our oh and there's also this nifty uh instruction sheet it shows you the different parts for the different variants and then just an exploded diagram of how to put everything together the instruction sheet for the panzer three i'm thinking the panzer three is a newer kit than the panzer four uh, from Plastic Soldier Company because it's got it's more step by step rather than 
this uh, exploded diagram view. But it suits its purpose. Okay, so tools, what kind of tools are we using? It's the standard Exacto number one handle with a number 11 blade. Nothing fancy there. You can get them just about anywhere. I talk at length about the Exacto knife in my uh, Veteran Wargamer podcast. I forget the episode number, but it's the one that, where I talk about using foam board. I'm a big fan of, of plastic cement, in particular testers. It comes with a brush on the cap, so you gotta do, all you have to do is open the bottle, and it's already it's ready to go. You just brush it on where you need it, and there you go. Now, I know that the Model Masters, the testers Model Masters plastic cement comes in like a little squirt bottle with a not a squirt bottle, but it's like a little, like an eyedropper kind of thing where it sticks out uh, a metal, kind of like a metal tube or a metal catheter for a better term. And you can put it exactly where you want it. I like brushing it on. It's I've used this stuff forever, so I don't see any reason to use anything different. Some flush cutters. These are the Citadel brand Game Workshop flush cutters. They work extremely well. They're nice for getting right up against the part that you're cutting and so you don't have a whole lot of extra plastic to cut off okay chris says episode 33 foam board a sharp knife and more there you go now these are some just generic side cutters that aren't quite as precise as the gw version and you'll see what we use those here for here in a second fishing weights Round spherical fishing weights. I use the crummy taken out of the bin at the hardware store for a dollar side cutters to cut these things in half to put in the whole of our models to give them some heft. And what do I put those in place with? Good old fashioned Loctite super glue gel. This stuff works really nicely. I like it a whole lot. Um, you can get uh, three tubes on a card for not a lot of money. So, construction is pretty straightforward on, on these kits, as you saw. And it's just from the exploded diagram. Uh, you just got to be careful in picking out the right parts that you want. Uh, the Panzer III model, or the Panzer III instructions start with the... Basically, you go from the top down in your construction. So, your sub-assemblies start with the gun and the, and the turret, then the hull, then the tracks and then you put everything together. So we'll do exactly that. Now I am preparing for my annual gaming weekend. I am way behind on getting a lot of this stuff done because, uh, well, quite frankly, I'm a busy guy. So uh, bear with me. Now we are gonna go ahead and to snip these pieces off. Sometimes they want to come off easy. Sometimes you can get them in there real, real well. Sometimes you can't. So just take your time. If you've never built any type of plastic kit, these are actually pretty good kits to get started on. They are a little bit smaller. If you're using a uh, the Plastic Soldier Company's 172nd kits or even their 28 millimeter kits. I'm not sure if they're doing their vehicles in 28 millimeter or not. Um, I know Warlord does, I think they claim 164th, not 164th, maybe like 156th as 28 millimeter for their kits for their uh, bolt action line. We'll get started with that. So this is. This is the main piece, main part of the turret. And I think it's an ammo bin. It goes on the back of the turret anyway, like this. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's an ammo bin with the store rounds in. So just like anything else, you're just going to take your time cleaning everything up. If you've got questions, feel free to... Feel th free to throw it up on the chat, and we'll go from there. 
Now, it's somewhat, I don't want to say ironic, but it is kind of interesting just to give you an idea of how my hobbying and professional life, for lack of a better term, goes. Um, so here I am working on a World War II model. And you've heard me talk about Audible in the past on the show, uh, on the podcast. I'm currently listening to an audiobook on Audible about the Civil War. My officer candidates are starting to gear up and get some studies done for a staff ride. We're taking to Fort Donelson, Tennessee, a Civil War battle. And here I am with this. That being said, does that mean there's going to be some Civil War gaming in my immediate future? Eh, maybe. Maybe I'll at a, at a minimum. Maybe I'll get maybe I'll get Battle Cry out and give it a go. But of the Commands and Colors games, uh, Battle Cry is probably my least favorite implementation that I've played so far. It just can't, seems kind of vanilla. Um, I think if someone were to take the time to this is the turret bottom I'm cutting off here. And you'll see here in a second it fits very nicely. Uh, turret bot the uh, battle cry, like I said, probably my least favorite implementation. I still like it, but um, I might have a grudge against the game to be quite honest with you because. I traded what became my copy of Battlecry. Um, I, in order to acquire it from a dude, I traded some Cronopia orcs, and I think I ended up getting. I think I ended up getting the the raw end of that deal because I want to say it was like twenty some figures that I traded. Maybe not quite twenty, sixteen to twenty four anywhere somewhere somewhere in there. And I got Battlecry. And having played other versions of the Commands and Colors rules, yeah, Battlecry just doesn't do it for me. Um, I think if someone were to take the time to kind of zazz it up, make it a little bit more like uh, Commands and Colors Napoleonics, where you've got some differentiation in the troops. Um, for example, you know, why, why couldn't you have sharpshooters? You know, why couldn't you have, um, you know, in any, any number of variants for the infantry, you know, sharpshooters or, uh, you know, you could have, I'm going to start cutting the, uh, commander's cupola out in his hatch. And I think I just bent that piece. Great. Uh, -oh. Sharpshooters, you know, veterans, uh, green troops, you know, stuff like that. The commands and colors system is pretty robust when it comes to that sort of thing. The uh, from what I've seen so far, the two the two systems that have done the most, or the two games that have done the most with the system, in my opinion, are going to be uh, Battle Lore Second Edition. And commands and colors Napoleonics, just because based off what you can do with what you've got at hand for the system, you know, which is just your basic your basic stat line and the you know your basic stat line and the uh, and the dice. I think it works extremely well. I, I like how the game works. I like how the game plays. It gives a satisfying game and a in relatively short order. This plastic is a this plastic around the commander's cupola is a bit thin, and that's actually the first time it's happened to me on on any of these. This is the ninth of these models that I've built that I've built. And this and the commander's cupola and turret by and large are identical between the Panzer III and Panzer IV, and this is the first one that's this has happened to. Get my glue on. 
give that just a little bit of pressure to set up. Interesting thing about this uh, type of plastic and the type of glue that we're using, it actually chemically, oh, chemically softens the plastic. So then when it comes in contact with this, with the same type of plastic or a, it just basically welds itself together. Pretty nifty. You want to make sure that you get it all lined up nice because those turret hatches, one half went to the left, one half went to the right. Take a look at this, make sure it's nice and straight. Not quite, so we'll just do a little bit of a turn. It is a pretty snug fit to begin with. Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, we've got some side hatches to glue on now. A little crew access hatches. Presumably so Hans and Fritz and Carl can all bail out when that Soviet made 85 millimeter shell comes bouncing into the hull. Now, while I will definitely go ahead and play German forces in a game, obviously, um, in the last episode of the podcast with Neil Shook, we talked, we talked about, you know, some societal sensitivities or social sensitivities to some of the aspects of warfare that we have to be sensitive to while we're gaming. And one in particular about world war two is you guessed it, the SS. I'm not a fan of the SS in any way, shape or form. I don't hold them in particularly high regard. Um, you know, I, it's one of those situations where they were an elite unit because they were told they were elite. I don't think they got any particularly great training. Um, you know, if you tell a unit enough that they're elite, they'll believe it and it might make them fight better. But at the end of the day, if you don't give them any better training or any better leadership, then they're not any, they're not really any better, but morale plays a huge part in that. So maybe there's something to it. You want to make sure that you get the uh, little viewport. Ah, dang it. There's a little viewport on these uh, hatches. You want to make sure to get them oriented in the right way, which is forward. Do, 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 do. I do apologize for the short notice on this. My schedule freed up. For this evening, I thought, well, it's a good time to go ahead and get back on the. See, and that's got our hatches, and I didn't even put it on right, even though I. That's the good thing about this plastic cement; it doesn't set up instantaneously, so you've got a little bit of time to work with it. And again, once we apply the shirts in, those are mostly going to get covered up. So, if you do have a mistake, it's not a big deal. Okay. On to the gun. Now, this is where you definitely want to take a look at which version you are using. So, as you can see, we're going to go for a Panzer H. All right. But that's got the same gun as the F2 and G, which is color-coded blue. So, we need to make sure that we take a look on the sprue for the blue gun mantlet and gun tube. So. As we take a look at our sprue, let's get it oriented the same way as the instructions. It's gonna be the lower of the mantlets, as you can see. And obviously it's gonna be the long gun. So snip, snip, snip. Okay, Chris. Chris is saying that he finally got his PSC M4s ordered from Titan Games. Well, I had 
thought I had ordered some M4 Jumbos from Titan Games. Did they say anything about that? We will wait and find out for his response. Titan Games is our game store in Springfield, Illinois that we go to. They've been really good about letting us run uh, games of What a Tanker up there. Um, actually, I bought these on the uh, this kit on the th or picked up this kit from Titan Games on the fifth of May. I was looking through my uh, Twitter photos and saw that I had posted a photo from in front of Titan Games with this box saying Cinco de Tanko. That works on a couple different levels because there's five models in the in the box. Oh, I thought it was funny. Okay, let's go and get the gun cut off now. So, Titan Games is a neat little store in Springfield, Illinois, like I mentioned. They're mostly board games and card games. They've got the, you know, they've got the Armada and the and the X-Wing stuff and, you know, the other Star Wars games that are coming out from Fantasy Flight. So, you know, they've got the Rebel Assault and Legion and the uh, Board Game Rebellion and all that good stuff. They've got a pretty brisk... They run a pretty brisk trade in, in those items, and they've got a pretty... Um, Uh, pretty burst shade, that sort of stuff. And they've been real helpful for uh, to us. Um, I want to get back up there and start running some games again uh, on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, not this last time, but the time before uh, we ran, Chris and I ran um, a little bit of glue. Ran uh, What a Tanker up there. Ah, damn it. We ended up having... Uh, a walk on, which was neat. Just a, you know, someone we hadn't met before. We had our uh, table set up and we're about to play. And he said, Man, that looks cool. And I said, Hey, you know, we want to join us? Sure. And the rest, as they say, is history. Okay. So Chris is saying that he had to get the jumbos from Gale Force 9 instead of Flames of War. He says they look close enough from what I can tell. All right. Good deal. So, yes, we are preparing for J3, but more importantly, more importantly, we are preparing for the recruit show coming up in September. And if you want to hear more about recruits, you can listen to just about any of the episodes of my podcast. Okay, Chris says their distributor realigned their website and he couldn't find anything from flames of war battlefront okay well there you go all right well that's the turret minus the uh, shirts in and the neat thing about these kits is we'll be able to add the shirts in later if we want to i'll probably just um considering the amount of time that we've got now i'll probably just get to the point where we're just about ready to add the shirts and it's a touch fiddly. So let's go ahead and get going with the rest of, with the hull. So you just snip the hull off. Okay, then we got this uh, engine deck needs to come off. That's a favorite place for Molotov cocktails and Satchel charges and the like. Go ahead and get these cleaned up and glued together. Now I'm you can see I'm not being super careful right now because let's face it, when I again when I put the shirts in over it, you won't even be able to tell. So one of the advantages of playing Germans, if you're not real hip on the, if you're not real hip on this type of prep work, or you don't feel like being particularly precise in some of your modeling, 
eh, cover with shirts and um one of the things i liked about the conversions and whatnot that i made of vehicles and such um back in the late 80s early 90s when i was making stuff for hammer 40,000 rogue trader era um if i had like an unsightly join or something that i didn't want to spend the time filling with filling with putty and sanding and smoothing and all that man just throw a camo net over it you know throw a piece of throw a piece of shirts and over it no big deal hold this for a second uh the site for recruits for the recruits convention easily enough is recruits convention one word dot com recruits convention dot com need to come up with a better camera mount so every time i move my arm the camera's moving and it's shaking I assure you, we are not experiencing. I assure you, we're not experiencing an earthquake. Let's got that. Um, let's see. We've got all sorts of extra stuff to add here. Um, bu -bu -bum. Okay, we've got the. Which turret front is it? That's well, the same one regardless. Okay. No option, just this one right here. There's a definitely difference between the different marks on the Panzer III kit for the driver and radio operator positions on the front of the hull. You know, so if I saw an interesting video on YouTube. Um, I forget. I forget the uh, channel. I think it's a Czech guy that does them, but he gets really down in the weeds about World War II doctrine and training and why certain things were done. And there's one of the videos he has uh, talks about why uh, German AFVs, that's armored fighting vehicles, use MG34s instead of MG42s. Especially since the MG34s, you know, they stopped producing them because they're a little bit more complicated to to build and actually had a lower rate of fire than the MG42s. Why they continue to use them in their tanks and armored cars. And it's fascinating because it has to do with how the barrels are changed. Um, on an MG42, in order to change the barrel, so for example, if this is the let me orient my hand here. So if this is the, you know, we'll go like this. In order to change the barrel, you hit a release and the barrel cants to the side like that. And then the gunner can remove it. So you got the barrel shroud still there. The system gunner then replaces the barrel and it locks in like that. On the MG34, to replace the barrel, the receiver stays in line with the barrel, but it rotates down so you can remove the barrel straight out, put the new barrel back in the barrel shroud like that, straight in, and then rotate the, uh, rotate the receiver back like that and lock it in place and get ready to rock and roll. So really fascinating, real interesting. Yeah, worth worth checking out if if I feel <laughs> if I feel like it. I'll uh, put a link. Well, not in the show notes, I guess, but in the in the description at some point. So just real neat. Um, I guess a lower rate, lower slower rate of fire also would allow you to have a little bit more discipline with your with your ammo consumption if you're into that sort of thing i guess um rates of fire matter and that's the that's the type of thing that people like me concern my concern ourselves with because being an infantryman at the level i'm at that's you know how much ammo you carry matters It's going through 200 rounds. 
Doesn't sound like a lot, but it is, especially when your basic load, basic load for an infantryman currently is 210 rounds of his rifle ammunition. 200 rounds. Granted, it's not a basic load for a machine gun, but let's see. What else are we missing? Oh, we got to put the... Got to put the back of the engine and whatnot on. I think I need to put the lower hull on first before I do that, though, if I recall correctly. I am looking at the instruction sheet. Bear with me. I might go a little bit. Eh, I don't know. We'll see. We're right at 30 minutes, folks. If you're just joining us, I am the Veteran Wargamer. My name is Jay Arnold. Joining us on the chat is my friend, brother, and super guest, Chris Arnold. Apparently, he's the only one watching also, and he hasn't even had the courtesy to like the video yet. Like, share, and comment, as always. Be sure to like the channel, the Veteran Wargamer channel. I want to continue doing more of these. I know I'll do at least one more this week of the uh, bull session. Let's build. I'll try to do more as we as we gear up for recruits as well. We've got some neat stuff that we're doing for our What a Tanker game. Um, actually, we've got we've got quite a lot of work to do just for our What a Tanker game at J three. Ta da! All right, so. Glue, glue, glue. Oh, hold on a second. Before I do that, it's time for fishing weights. Um, these are Water Gremlin Round Split Shot. The I'm not sure exactly the weight of each split shot. Um, I'm going to use six of them. I think that that's a good... I think I use six. Did I use six or four? Yeah. These will be heavier than others, I guess. Well, hold on a second. So I do cut them in half. I don't think... Well, I could maybe do... I'll do five. Yeah, I'll do five. Okay, so this is... I'm not sure the exact weight, um, but the code on these is 735-5. Five. There's 24 in a pack. They are made in America. Good folks uh, at Water Gremlin in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. So these do contain lead, so don't go chewing on them. Put them in your tea or anything like that. Uh, I want to say a pack like this weigh, you know, cost maybe a dollar seventy-five at Walmart. So it's a neat, neat tool to have. So let's go ahead and get these dudes split up. Get our cheap pliers. Just cut them in half. That's all I got to do. Like I said, it gives it's going to give the model a little bit of heft, a little bit of weight. You know, the the finished model is not going to be as heavy as a finished model is not going to be as heavy as a resin model, or definitely not as heavy as a metal model. But that's okay. Uh, Fifteen millimeter is such a great figure size for what a tanker. And chain of command for that matter. Um, I've got I ain't been shot, Mum. I don't see me playing it anytime soon though. Um really need to come to grips with how chain of command plays still. Am I gonna glue on this? All right, oh there we go. So as you can see with this gel, it, it stays exactly where you want it to. And I think I put enough down so that it'll kind of wrap around the weights. And then I'm just, I'm using the, the cutters as forceps to get these in place. Cause if you use your fingers, it's, they might flip over, then they won't be in place as well. Or they'll flip over and they won't have a surface contact with the with the glue. So let's kind of move these around a little bit as needed. And again, you've got you've got a little bit of time to work with them. It doesn't set instantly. Yeah, I think oops. I think five's gonna 
five of those weights split in half is going to work just fine. Oh, there's a like. Nothing like guilting your brother into something, right? What are brothers for? So, the um, Historicon Game Convention run by HMG, HMGS East was just this past weekend. Um, for, uh, Howard Whitehouse was inducted into their Legion of Honor. Congratulations, Howard. Uh, for his, as he <laughs> describes it, ostentatious playing with toy soldiers, or ostentatiously playing with toy soldiers these past many, many years. Also inducted of honor was uh, another friend of the show, uh, Richard Clark of Two Fat Lardies. So we are quite pleased that both gentlemen have been on the show and are now inducted into the Legion of Honor. So obviously, if you are a hobby luminary and are looking to get into the Legion of Honor, the way to do that is to come on the Veteran Wargamer podcast. So a <laughs> little bit of a joke there, folks, of course. Um, I could more easily say that they were inducted into the Legion of Honor, Legion of Honor despite having been on the on the podcast. We're awfully pleased for them. The Perry twins received the honor of, uh, I think they called it the Scrooby Award for their efforts in making models and figures for the hobby. Jack Scrooby, if you're not familiar, is one of the pioneers of manufacturing toy soldiers for the express purpose of more games that just goes right on top like that so that's a nice little bit of detail there as you can see we've got our driver position our radio operator position with that MG34 as mentioned earlier some little bit of stowage that's that's molded on the uh, engine deck some mechanical bits in the back there so not too shabby as you can see, the there's a little peg on the bottom of the turret. It goes right into the socket there on the hull. It does go on a little bit stiffly, so in order to allow the turret to rotate a little bit more freely during our games of What a Tanker, I am going to go ahead and bore this out just a little bit. We do have another viewer. Hello, welcome to... Or a live viewer, I should say. We've got a, a second live viewer now. Welcome to the broadcast. Please let your feel free to let yourself be known. Robert Chisholm says hi. Let's let's see if we can take a look at Robert's. He's got a toy soldier on his for an icon. Let's see if we can see him a little bit better. I um, guess we can't right now. Do 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 do. Well, hi Robert. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're about thirty eight minutes in. Um, so I'm just boring out the, boring out the, uh, socket. So our turret will turn just a little bit better during our games of what a tanker. There we go. That's better. Okay. So what else do we have besides the shirts? And, you know, I might go ahead and put the shirts in on. We've got some other stuff. Oh, got to put the exhaust on. Can't forget that. So throw the, and there's some neat little storage bits we can, we're going to throw on here real quick. Um, I'm not going to get super detailed on these, 
Um, at the end of the day, we're going to have about a dozen, uh, about a dozen U.S. tanks and about a dozen German tanks uh, in our game at recruits. So, okay, Robert says his icon is a War Games Foundry eighteen twelve Militia Man Mini. All right, well, great. Um, I'm a big fan of War Games Foundry. Um, just about anybody who's anybody that's sculpting historical figures at one point or another is sculpted for them. The Perrys, of course, uh, with their gorgeous, um, hold on a second. They don't show very well where this exhaust is supposed to go. Or is that an exhaust? Wait, hold on. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to skip it for now. Yeah, it looks like I skipped it on the other models too. So, yep, we're skipping it. All right. Um, there's a little length of track that you can add on. Uh, they did put track on their on their vehicles, not just because they would need little bits of track from time to time, because you would throw a track and you'd break track and whatnot. But it was handy to have as impromptu improvised armor. So we'll throw that on there as well. And they've got a rack of road wheels you can glue on. Again, with the shirts, and that kind of limits our, our options for that sort of thing. Because that goes, a lot of that detail is going to get covered up. Okay. Now the foundry figures that I have that I love the most are the early Imperial Roman figures sculpted by the Perrys. So they've got a lot of character to them. Um, now my opinion is somewhat somewhat colored because I received some from my mom as a Christmas present one year. So that's definitely one thing that I will never get rid of. Okay, one piece track option. Here we go. So these are just a matter of cutting them off and putting them on the right place. Now, one neat thing that Foundry does more recently is more recently they have done some sci-fi and fantasy ranges, and they are sponsors of the Bring Out Your Lead event over there in, in the UK, which is an old hammer fantasy and sci-fi event. Um, I think it's actually coming up in August. I want to say this time last year, or maybe a little bit after, I had... Uh, Two fellow old hammerers on the show. Uh, and we talked about old hammer and bring out your lead in particular. If you look on the Facebook page, the uh, I've got a video on there. And that's the basically a flyby of the Hell's Reach table that they had set up. And it's absolutely spectacular. Now, it's it's one of those things where I there's a lot of cool stuff going on in the UK. Um, Joy of Six War Game Show was this past Sunday. That's all about six mil. Well, I happen to be all about six mil, um, mostly in ancients. I, I I'd like to get into some other eras with six mil stuff. I've got some Napoleonics that are probably never going to see the light of day. I've got some Civil War that's never going to see the light of the day, most likely. I'd like to change that, but just the the right the right project or the right set of rules just hasn't come up and slapped me. 
Um, if I were to do something with six mil civil war, eh, admittedly it'd be some sort of commands and colors adaptation. Same with the, uh, Same with the, oh, my chat went away. I don't know what that's about. Oh, there it goes. Okay, Robert says, I only have the one Founder 1812 U.S. Militia Pack. I wanted to start something Black Powder era and started with 1812. Switched to French and Indian War. Um, this past weekend, I'm digressing. I'm digressing from my digression. Um, I uh, This past weekend we started uh, discussing American military history with my officer candidates uh, who just started phase two of officer candidate school this past weekend. And uh, we talked about French and Indian war. And of course I showed them the retreat from uh, the British retreat from the fort and their ambush in the, in the forest as an example of the guerrilla warfare. Uh, style and tactics as practiced during the war. Um, I was talking six mil. Um, you know, six mil would probably be, probably be some variant of uh, commands and colors, whether that would be... So I'm going to go ahead and do the shirts in any way while, while we're here. Um, some variant of commands and colors, whether that is... Um, whether that would be battle cry or you know a modified version of battle cry perhaps you know, remains to be seen i don't know we'll see i you know there's a lot more stuff i want to do so chris arnold says your old hammer episode was all the way back in october 2016 episode 3 i had another old hammer episode um where i talked with uh Dave Grove and uh, Chris Lopez. Um, what did I call that one? No, episode three was called Everything Old. See, Everything Old Hammer is New Again. And what did I call the one with Lopez and Grove? What was that? It was about this time last year because Boyle was in August or so. And then Dave and I got together for Corn Hammer in you know Old Hammer in the Midwest. We had shirts and everything made. What was that called? Yeah. Anyhow, where's my other oh, the shirts? And there it is. So Napoleonic six mil, obviously I'll probably do something with commands and colors. Um, if I were to do anything, sharp practice um, would be an option. Of course, if I were to do sharp practice, I'd probably do 15, 15 mil stuff, uh, uh, 18 millimeter stuff. Um, exactly what era. I don't know. Maybe American war of independence. Um, Maybe Texas War of Independence, you know, 1835-1836. Something along those lines. So the shirts and have you kind of got to be delicate with them because they they've got little guidelines molded on that you can just kind of rest the shirts and on the on the hull, but they don't have a whole lot of surface area to meet up with because basically you're you're gluing it to the skirts of the the track skirts well yeah the shirts and but the i'm not a tanker so forgive me the little horizontal bit there the <laughs> that's a, fenders i guess most people would call them but anyhow so many interests so little time that's how it goes isn't it now these tank shirts and or the tourist shirts and i should say are pretty interesting they've got some handy ways of lining themselves up 
and you've got to be kind of careful. Otherwise, you're going to have a big gap on the back side of them. I would like to do sharp practice. I like the idea of sharp practice. Um, I'm just not sure exactly what it is I would do. Um, and you got to get, you know, you have to get enthused. You have to find, you know, find enthusiasm in it. Um, what a tanker, you know, was easy for me to get enthusiastic about. It plays really nicely. It's neat playing with tanks. You know, anyone who doesn't like to play with tanks, you're missing out. Okay. I'm not going to say you're a bad person necessarily, although that's entirely likely. But playing with tanks is a whole lot of fun. Um, the rules themselves are a whole lot of fun. You, they, they can they can be frustrating, but you know what? I I remember plenty of times in my military career, not necessarily even under fire, but plenty of times in my military career where I've been frustrated. So I can live with that, I guess. And for some reason, our notes went away again. There you go. Okay, Robert says, I have the sharp practice two rules. I haven't run them yet. Normally, my French and Indian games are muskets and tomahawks. Or songs of drums and tomahawks for small games. Okay. What a tanker sounds fun. Looks to be an easy way to get into World War II gaming. You know, that's exactly right. Um, it is an easy way to get into World War II gaming. Um, if you were to do, say, you know, if you were to do North Africa or uh, Russian steppes, you know, terrain's not going to be terribly difficult. It's a, you know, it's a tan or a khaki piece of cloth that you can get at Joanne Fabrics and off you go. Oh, and here we got Tom chiming in. Tom Primrose says, I have the, S the sharp practice two rules and 18, 12 minutes from knuckle duster. Well, that's spectacular. Thank you. Tom, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, I, I, I've got the original sharp practice. From what I understand, it's quite a bit different with the new with the new system. Now very much friend of the show. Mike Hobbs of Meeples and Miniatures uh, does have a War of 1812 book for Sharp Practice 2. Now you can see where in the back you got to make sure that everything lines up nicely. Again, the shirts and do have some nice um, let's see if we can get, get it to focus on get the camera to focus on that a little bit better. Uh, you can't really see it very well, but um, that seam there, if you're careful, you can pretty much make that seam go away. So, um, what I was saying, yeah, Mike, Mike Hobbs has written a, a War of 1812 supplement for Sharp Practice, a uh, friend of the show. Uh, check it out if you are into the War of 1812. Um, Robert says, I almost bought some of the Knuckle Duster 1812 British Marines. Very nice minis. Thanks for the heads up there. Well, as you can see, our little Panzer 4H is assembled. Okay, let's see. Tom is saying, you're welcome. I have What a Tanker also. I built the PSC Panzer 4s and T-34s. I need to get some T-34s. Um, I've got two T-3485s 3485s that are metal. Um, I do have uh, Soviets. Uh, in 15 mil for chain of command. And I'd like to get some tanks. Um, basically we're doing what a tanker for J three and for recruits. Cause Chris has oodles of 
Sherman's and is interested in the 36th Infantry Division and the attached units. So we're doing Operation Dragoon, or we're setting our games in Operation Dragoon anyway. Um, so for my Germans, I've picked the 11th Panzer Division to face them. And then the, uh, uh, interesting, interestingly enough, the 11th Panzer Division also, also fought in Kursk. So I'll be able to do some Kursk actions, um, at some point if I so choose, but well, that's our Panzer four. He's all put together, all ready to go. It's got some nice heft to him. He's got some nice detail. Uh, he and his four brothers are, well, I've got one more to assemble. So maybe I'll do another uh, let's build and ramble on about various things uh, later this week. I'm going to get some paint on all of them. I've got five Panzer threes and we'll have five Panzer fours that we'll need to get some time in the spray booth. So I'm thinking for J3 just because time is short and I've got some administrative stuff to do, such as getting the... Uh, getting the uh, data sheets printed for and filled out for the various tanks. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'll get some Dunkel Gelb and some black on the, on the tracks and call it good for now, but definitely want them to get in better shape for, for recruits, which is coming up uh, in September. So, and that's not, that's not far away. It's about a month and a half. So we're coming up on 57 minutes. Um, I think I mentioned before how it takes me about an hour to put one of these together. And as you can see, even with rambling and talking to y'all, it's taken me right about an hour. And I've had a good time uh, building this kit. These are neat kits. Like I said, um, Tom, thanks for the heads up on the T-34s. I do want to do those. Um, the, the Soviets had a lot of neat equipment. Uh, T-34s in, in particular. Uh, you know, the 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 plastic soldier company models, if you're careful and you're really, if you're really careful with what you're doing, you could probably get multiple variants out of the same kit. Like if I wanted to take the time and figure out some way of magnetizing the, the shirts in, you know, I could have Panzer, Panzer four F two or G or H, you know, just with uh, some careful magnetization of the parts. So, well, coming up on 58 minutes i want to thank everyone for showing up and watching uh those of you who are watching afterwards uh thank you for clicking on the link be sure to share like and comment spread the word about the spread the word about the veteran war gamer podcast and youtube channel and facebook and twitter and all that good stuff uh so i guess i guess we'll call it a night and as always if the war gaming you're having isn't any fun you make it fun. That is all.